What is good, y'all? I am your host, Jones, and welcome to another episode of Locker Room Sunday. And today is a very special episode because, like I said last week, we was going to get Freddie and we was going to get E on the show to talk their shit because, as y'all know, they played each other and it didn't go the way we thought it would go. <laughs> so we obviously going to get into that. We're going to go into a recap of the of week uh, 11 and our picks for week 12. But first, let's get into some news uh, that just happened uh, this past weekend, which is we just spoke off air about Joe Burrow getting injured, being out for the season. Um, a lot of people had him picked to be the rookie of the year or at least being in the running. What are you guys' thoughts on uh, Joe Burrow being out for the season? You can go first, first of all, it was it looked horrible. That should look bad. As as, yeah. as somebody who plays, Fred, you know we never like looking at those injuries. You see them shits, you like, oh fuck. But yeah, he tore yeah. a lot of shit in that knee. Um, yeah, that's that just sucks because it's like he was the only bright light the fucking Bengals had, and now it's like. I'm him. I don't rush back. Take it. But then, but time that yeah. team is not going to be contending anytime soon. So, take that time and let that shit heal up properly. Nah, yeah, but um, that that was a nasty injury, especially when it popped back, popped out to pop right back in, and yeah. that's something you never want to see. Especially he was having a good season. You know that their record don't show for it, but his numbers was good. Um, but that just shows goes to show you that they need an offensive line. Because <laughs> yes. every play he's running for his <laughs> life. They need an offensive line. So that's their top priority in this draft on the offseason, try to get some type of protection for him. Especially he's coming back from a knee injury now. So they definitely gonna need protection for him. Yeah. You're gonna ha- they're gonna have a high yeah, draft pick anyway. Oh yeah, that is true. So, so you might as well use it on the exactly. timeline. Somebody. Yeah, I mean, I think that goes for every team in the NFL. You got to be able to protect your franchise quarterbacks or your future franchise quarterbacks. You got to do it no matter what, because things like this happens. And then you never know what happens to his career after it. So you got to make sure that that's taken care of early. Um, The other news before we get into the the game is the Ravens, after coming off of their loss this week, um, now might be out be without Ingram and Dobbins being on the COVID list. What do you guys think that will do to their chances of winning the division, which looks like it's, it's hard now because Pitt is still winning, but even even making that play up that wild card spot. But that's going to take a big toll on them because without those two, who else, who else is they running backs besides Lamar Jackson? They ain't got nobody else. Mm-hmm. And now you already seen that he's struggling in the passing game. So now this is going to basically force them to have to have him turn into a drop back passer, which he usually struggles with. And now everybody's gonna key on that. So what they're gonna do is they're, <laughs> sure. they're gonna just keep sending they're gonna send pressure at him. They're gonna keep sending pressure at him now. They're gonna make him run. They're gonna he's gonna he's gonna be their total offense as you can see now. But hopefully, you know, maybe mm-hmm. they could just be because what happened with some other teams, what they have like close contact with somebody. So maybe he, they don't have COVID. Maybe it was just a close contact and they could probably still play. Yeah, those false negative tests and shit. So yeah, right, so maybe right. hopefully that's the best case scenario for them that is just a little false negative or a close contact. But if not, then mm-hmm. that kind of like that's going to be tough for them because I, who, I, mean, who, yeah. I don't even know who they played this week. That's a good one. Um, I'll check right now. They um, play the Steelers on Thursday. Oh yeah, that that's that's what makes it even worse because now it's a short week. Because a lot of times, like like you you mentioned, Ben Ben was on it and he still made the following game that Thursday. Mm-hmm. But yep. with it being a short week, that's gonna be a tough task. Ben, Freddie said with mentioning that make Lamar, Lamar have to be a passer and shit. I'll give you one worse. Mark Andrews is questionable now too. Okay. That's like Ooh. his go-to guy. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I mean, for the division, I think they they better just hope to get a wild card, and because it looks like Pittsburgh's got, especially now with doing that, you just made Pittsburgh's job a lot easier to win that division. But it's hard but for them. They got to shot at least a wild card also because look at the AFC right now. You yeah, got... that's what I was gonna get out because you got the Browns who are actually making a run for that spot. 
You got a lot of six you and guys. four. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of six guys. and four teams. Six and four and seven and three teams right now. So yeah. this as hard as that final, that seventh playoff spot is going to be a, a hard one because right now Tennessee's holding on to it. And then you got the Raiders right there. You got mm-hmm. Miami. You got Baltimore. You got the Browns. You still even got the Patriots. The Patriots is as yeah. bad of a season they have, and they still alive in it. Uh-huh. At four and five, I think that's what their record is. So yeah. it was like yeah. they're still in the, the mix of it, everything, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree with everything y'all said. That's the biggest key is now you're going to make Lamar have to be a throw in quarterback because he's not going to be able to win just running the ball. So, and we've seen him not be able to do that much of the year. Uh, he, he, you know, he showed signs of being good at passing the ball last year, but this year he hasn't showed it. So um, that's really going to be big for them if they, if they want to win. I just think that offense became too predictable. Yeah. So it's easier mm-hmm. for defense to scheme against it with knowing, all right, they're going to put a bunch of design runs and he's either if Lamar's not going to take the big shot downfield, he's going to run. Mm-hmm. So exactly. It's too predictable. But then now they got they have a linebacker spying on him now, so it's really yeah. hard for him to run. <laughs> Their de- the defense alignment is not crashing in anymore. Everybody's staying on the outside waiting for him mm-hmm. to run. So now he's basically in a box. He still somehow manages to get out of it. Yeah. But and another thing <laughs> yeah. I want to say too is, especially the last couple of weeks, their defense has to step up. Yes. Their defense is like yeah. hasn't been playing the way they should. Especially with all those additions at the trade deadline. They have to step up. I agree. Yeah, they haven't been like a lot of people say that last year the Baltimore defense was the, were the bullies. They were bullying yeah, they everyone. That. But now it looks like they're getting bullied. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now before we get into what everyone is here to talk about. We're, let's make our quick picks before this game is over. Who do you got tonight? Rams, uh, Bucks, E, who you got? I'm, I'm going to say the Rams. That defense, like. Rams? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Rams and their defense. Okay, Freddie? Yeah, um, I'm going to go with the Rams also. But something tells me don't bet against Brady or don't go against Brady, but. You can see that he struggles. <clears throat> he struggles with a good defensive line or a good defense. Yeah, whenever a team has and a good pass rush, he yeah, struggles. Yeah, he really struggles with that because right. again, he doesn't yeah. want to get hit. And, and I, I think – coming right up the middle. I'm going to tell you the truth. This is where I think it's kind of hurting him. He doesn't have that same New England-style offense where he doesn't have a lot of those small slot guys to throw. So, I know he got Antonio Brown now, but – you figure like, good Chris Godwin and Evans are down the field type of receivers. Yeah, there's a new offense of him. Right, right. that's, that's, that's the difference. It's, it's a new offense. Yeah, so it's a new offense. It's a it's a Bruce Arians offense where they're forced to throw the ball down the field, and against a good team where you got a, a, a front seven where they can get at you, and he he's not used to holding that ball as long. He's not. He's not going to be able to, to perform well. Yep. Because in New England, it was drop so, back. I'm, I agree with you guys. I, get rid of the ball quick. So. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So now let's get into what, why we are here. Why you two are here today. <laughs> Broncos, Miami. <laughs> you you both love your teams. You very passionate. Miami through the past couple of years haven't been looking great, but this year they bounced back and they've been looking like one of the top AFC teams in that conference. And they go up against a decent Broncos team. They had their struggles for sure, but they, they play decent, but well, let's be all honest. We all had the Miami Dolphins winning this game, especially how they've been playing the past few weeks, but that's not what happened. They look like, the Miami of old, honestly. And you just didn't see those great plays that we were used to seeing. And we even seen Tua get benched. So I'll let Freddie start this one off. How does that feel after that tough loss to your rival against your boy, E? I'm not even going to lie that <laughs> it, it irritates. It, it really does bother because I know I got a CE. <laughs> But not even because of that. It just it, it, it more it mostly got me mad that the fact that 
they basically play down to their competition. We know going in that mm-hmm. we had a better offense than them, better defense, better special teams, but they just went out there and played bully ball. They said, we're going to run the ball down your throats and we're going to run play action and we're going to get rid of the ball quick yeah. and make sure we didn't get one. I don't think we got one sack on lock, um, lock yesterday. Not one sack on them. But um, we got an interception, but that was the only bright. That was it. We had, they showed little spots here and there when they got, but offense in general could not move that ball. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, it was all two us for it. It's not. He's a rookie. I expected him to have an off game. But the pressure he was getting. He, yeah, right. he was getting blitzed. They was, the offensive line was getting blitzed. He, they were sending more than five people every snap. I seen some stat that they said uh, they sent five or more people, 14 out of his 26 dropbacks. That's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's it a is. lot for a rookie to go and play That's one year in a higher altitude. Yes. Then you're going over there and you're getting blitzed and they're sending more than five people at you every 14 out of your 26 dropbacks. Plus our – Receivers mm-hmm. were not getting no separation. So every pass that he was throwing, it was getting contested. What else? No running game. Couldn't run the ball. So right. they're running play actions with him. Not even, what, and then this is what irritates me also with Chan Gailey. You have a left-handed quarterback. In college, he lived off the RPOs, and he lived off of play action running around and throwing on a run. You ran two mm. play action plays to the right, yep, to the right side of the field, and he's a left handed quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two <laughs> out of the whole game, he ran. I don't think they, he, they did what they didn't do, no RPOs. So it was like you took him out of his whole game. Yeah, you took him out of his whole game. Mm-hmm. Then they bench him. They, first, they said it was an injury. I'm like, okay, maybe he has a foot injury because he, he popped up on an injury report earlier in the week with a foot injury. So I'm like, okay, maybe he's injured. But then I'm like, if it was a serious injury, he wouldn't be standing on the sideline right there. So come to find out it was right. it was because of a performance. They threw fits in. I'm like, all right, let's see what he could do. He drove us down there, got a field goal. Now you got a chance to tie the game, and then you show why you're the backup quarterback. Because you throw it into double coverage and get it picked off to lose the game. Yep. And Would you agree why, that he played a little bit better than Tua when he came in? He played, he played a little bit better because once he came in, Chan Gailey opened up the playbook. Tua was only getting these little eye right. formations, these little pistol. This guy, when Fitz came in, he was getting empty sets, five wide receiver sets with everybody. He was getting the ball out quick, quick, quick. <laughs> yeah. So it's – he went from right. putting the training wheels on Tua to, like, all right, Fitz, here. You come in and you just get a five. He didn't have – it was no little play actions for Fitz. It was straight shotgun, snap, get the ball, dump it to one of the yeah. dudes in the backfield. He was getting a running back in the backfield to block for him. Right. Tua wasn't getting no running backs in the backfield. Tua was being left out there for them to tee off on him. Tua is not – I, yeah. I'm not going to call him a, a – he's not a mobile, mobile quarterback, but he's better on the run throwing than just dropping back. So why would you have him just dropping back on a regular mm-hmm. five-step drop, seven-step drops, and you know your offensive line is bad? Help him out. If his offensive line is struggling, send him on the run. Move the pocket. Why have him keep dropping back? And then you're not even giving him a running mm-hmm. back to at least chip and give him some extra time. So that that game, I blame on the coaching staff on our offense on the offensive coordinator because that was bad play calling, bad play calling. But good game yeah. by the Broncos, though. Sure. <laughs> e, how you feeling today? Oh, listen, there, it, there's no there's no secret that there's a there's ha, there's a reason why I have been on the locker room Sundays this season. <laughs> I called our season over and before our first game when Vaughn Miller went down. And now, all right, for this game, you know, especially you, Sean, you know, me and Freddie might be some the top trash talkers you know as of just talking shit. So now imagine us playing each other. 
like if our record was somewhere like theirs, oh, this game would have meant a lot yesterday. Because I actually was in his house early in the day. I think I would have <laughs> stayed there longer to watch some of the game. Yes, he did. He came over to the house earlier before the game. Yeah, so, but not nah, like, did, was it good to get the win? Of course, because here it is with us. When we're bad, we're not bad enough to have like the first pick in the draft. We're always stuck in that bad to not make the playoffs, but not bad enough to be a top pick. Yeah. So, right. And especially now with that extra playoff spot, you never know with the way shit's going. So you can win. And what's a bigger morale boost than beating a team that was on a five game win streak? Mm hmm. We did look like yeah, we did look absolutely. like a little bit more of ourselves yesterday with the defense, the way they yeah. played. They were aggressive. You know, uh the one touchdown you guys did have, Devontae Parker most, AJ Boye, yes he did. But even and then, you know, on the pick, <laughs> Justin seen Justin Simmons seen Fitzpatrick staring that route down the whole way. He read his eyes the whole way and jumped yeah. that route. Oh man. <laughs> is my yeah. guy. I mean, classic. classic. Yeah, but um, nah. Classic. I I'm not gonna be celebrating this win because it's like, all right, now we got four wins. We're still in third place in the division. We still gotta see the Chiefs again. It, it's a long way for me to be like, all right, we're going to the playoffs. So, I'm looking at y'all. Y'all score some every game from the season, and every game, y'all was it was close games. Yeah, but you, and what you gotta remember too. Yeah, Especially early in the season, we had significant, like, we've had significant injuries almost every game early in the season. Mm -hmm. Losing our number one receiver, we lost Drew Locke for a couple games. We lost Melvin Gordon, who had a big game yesterday. We lost our number one corner. Yeah. Obviously, Von Miller's out for the year. We lost a whole bunch. Yeah, we sure did. We sure did. But um. What I would say about Tua is it seems like he needs to um, maybe, like you said, Freddie, they got to open up the playbook a little bit more for him because it seems like he's off of his first read. After that's gone, he's hesitating a little bit on his second and third read. I don't like, and so, I, don't like I don't like benching him because of performance because it's like, first of all, he's a rookie. You started him in, in the middle of the season. Okay, he started off a nice hot streak. You know he's bound to struggle sooner or later. So why bench him? Because right, exactly, it and makes no sense. It didn't. It didn't make sense. It wasn't a. I think Tua could have did the same thing Fitzpatrick did when he got in the game. When they they're gonna just drop and and go empty set and dump the ball off a few times to make some plays. I mean, I think that was something that Tua could have did. Let him let he's a rookie. Let him go through it. Let him uh you know feel a a, a loss because he hadn't lost. So let him ride that whole thing out. And maybe he'll learn from it. But I think like Freddie said, that that's on the coaches. The coaches gotta put him in a better position. Um also another thing to point out is their special teams didn't do anything for the first time in a few weeks. And that's one of the things that they've been amazing at probably the best in the NFL right now as far as special teams goes. And they didn't uh, make any special uh, plays on special teams. So you got to give credit to the Broncos because they definitely made sure that they were not going to let up on on those yeah. special team plays. Even with Because that's what usually gets point, them in the game. They was kicking it away from Jakeem Grant. They was kicking it to the side. It wasn't even giving him a chance to get a return. They were not giving him a chance to get right. any returns on anything. So he was no momentum, um, like um, switching the game. It was nothing, no momentum shifts, nothing. It was not giving him a chance to even change the game with a, a, a punt return. Yep. return. But like the same yep. thing you're saying with um, yeah. with the benching of Tua. I think let oh good pass oh horrible pass. I was saying um, let him try to fight, try to get his way out of that slump that he was in. You know what I mean? He's been down before in college. I agree. We've seen him come in and come back. So why not give him, let this be a learning experience for him also. Okay, I'm down by, what, 10. Let's see if I could dig my way back out of this. 
Clifton. Maybe they should have opened the playbook up Daddy. for him more. Right. Maybe they should have opened the playbook up for him a little bit more. And would you be quiet, Aiden? Um, maybe they could have opened up the playbook a little bit more for him and gave him the opportunities that Fitz had. Who knows? Because two was he's from a spread type of spread offense in Alabama. Yeah. He's used to spreading the ball out, having five receivers out there. So why not give him that opportunity to do that? And who knows? Maybe this week they give him right. And like you said, it was. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like you said, it's not out of reach. Give him an opportunity to try to pull your team back. And if he can't, he can't. It is what it is. You still lost. Fitz came in, so he made a difference. You got to give the right chance. Um, But yeah, so it is what it is. Like me and Freddie were talking about uh, before off air. You win some, you lose some. Any given Sunday, it is what it is. You know, you have your good games, you have your bad ones. So, um, but speaking of those days, my team happened to be on that good side for this week against a pretty decent team in the Vikings. But with a great rushing offense with Dalvin Cook, so I don't like to brag too much, but I'm gonna brag today. I didn't know what the hell was going on in that game. It was a great catches. Yeah, both by C.D. Lamb and, and Thielen. They both had some great catches in that game for sure. Um, but let me just say about my Cowboys before I let y'all talk about it, because I know y'all going to talk some shit probably. At least he is. Um, wow. <laughs> um, I just know you, bro. I just know you. Um, over the past three weeks, I would like to say that that's the team, especially yesterday, that's the team that I see – or preseason winning that division. That looked like a team that can actually compete. Because like I've been saying over the past few weeks, we still have the talent on the field. It's not like those guys aren't there. Besides Dak, obviously, and a few linemen, but the talent is still there. It's just we have to execute and make plays and and give effort, which is through the first four weeks, five weeks, there was no effort. And – Everyone that watches this show knows that's what I've been saying week after week after week. It's not our coaches. It's effort. It's guys not fucking wanting to be there, not wanting to give an extra play. We had a player even say who plays 100% for a full fucking four quarters. Who says that? Who says shit like that? That that player doesn't deserve to be on the team. I don't think he even is on the team anymore. I forgot who it was. It was one of the corners or the safeties or some shit. He says some dumb shit like well, that. He, if he's, but, if, if he's you know, it's things like that that make a difference. If he if he's a secondary player. It makes a difference, but. If he's a player mm-hmm. that plays in the secondary, yeah, he can't give 100% all, quarters, all four quarters because they're most likely getting toasted most of the game. Exactly. But I will say that our defense has looked a lot better over these past three weeks. We've held – um, even though Dalvin Cook still got his 100 yards, we still made him work for it. Uh, last week against – not last week, the week before that against Pitt, we went down to the nail with them. And then not a great Philly team, obviously, but we still went toe-to-toe with them. So I I feel a lot more confident going into this week against a division rival, Washington, who blew us out the water the first time. I think we'll make it a lot more competitive uh, coming this week. But I'm proud of, you know, what my team was able to do these past few weeks, even in losses. Um, Not saying that we're going to go win the division and go on a run and shit like that. I'm not one of those Cowboy fans. I'm not going to do that. But I will say I'm proud of what my team has been the past few weeks. And if we make the playoffs, we make the playoffs. I'm not going to say we're going to win it. I ain't going to do that. Sad part Honestly, is, I don't even want to win the fucking – make it. Is, I want to get a fucking first-round draft pick. The sad part is 5-11 and 11 wins that division. <laughs> right. 5-11 exactly. is going to win that division. So right. that's, that's horrible. I mean, but like you said, like – It's bad. It is what it is, but you guys are in, in the worst division in football. You definitely have a shot to get a, to get a playoff spot. 
That division is terrible. Bro. Yeah, it's bad all around. Yeah. All around bad. Um, like you said though, like I think a lot of it had to do like the offense getting is having Dalton at quarterback there because he's a veteran. Even though that other guy hasn't been playing bad, like especially against Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um Go yeah, over. like your offense finally look got the offense looked like it had life to it. One other thing. They moved uh, Zach Martin, I think it was, to to uh, tackle, something like that. That was a big, big, big move because Zeke finally got 100 yards. Finally, after week 11, Who you finally got a 100-yard game. Who you and me? The week I didn't it was just nice on- to see that. Pollard having a good game. I've been saying Pollard need to get more touches. He finally got more touches, and we seen him get in the end zone yesterday. So definitely proud of that, too. Who are you talking about, Zeke? The week he has a great game, I sit him in fantasy. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fantasy for you. That's fucking fantasy. He hit Ramsey. It's a bitch. <laughs> yeah, right, Freddie, talk, shit, talk shit about the Cowboys. Well, I, don't, I don't really got – listen, I didn't really pay attention to that game. I actually was surprised that they won. I just happened to see – yeah, Skip my only yeah, was those I two seen Skip Bayless had posted something, so that's when I knew that the Cowboys had won with him dancing and shit like that. But now it was good to actually see the Cowboys <laughs> finally get a win, see Sean actually happy again because Sean's been very quiet on social media. And you know, this is a good week. You see, you know, you guys, we got the Broncos winning now. You get <laughs> the Cowboys win. As I said, it was a lucky, a lucky day for some. It's a good week. <laughs> it's a lucky week for us. A lucky week. I, hey, I'll take it. I'll fucking take it. But um, let's get into the, the picks for the week. And let's start off with Thursday night. Is this correct? Yeah, this is correct. Um, Texans, Lions. E, who you got? Texans. Why would you waste my time? The Lions suck. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. The Lions are not. They don't suck. They suck. The Texans suck. They both I, both I, teams are I, bad. It, both teams are bad, but I I wouldn't go as that far. I wouldn't go. The Lions are a lot better than people give them credit. Yeah, for. they're not good enough. I think they're a lot, especially especially with that running back Swift. He's been amazing. Now, obviously, they got killed last game, but I think that was the difference because they didn't have their their starting running back Swift, who's been killing for them the past few weeks. So I, I wouldn't go. I don't. I don't think the Lions suck. I think they just had a bad game. I think the Texans will win because Sean Watson's starting to get a little hot right now. Well, he is. He had a big I game need the Texans to lose because the Dolphins got their first round, their first um round pick and their second round pick in this year's draft. So I need the Texans to keep losing the rest of their games. Give us a higher <laughs> draft. <laughs> But now nah, I think the Texans could have pulled off, but you know the 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 Lions they have their days. Word, word. All right. The Lions do have their days though. Yeah. Um, I just noticed that we have three for the first time in NFL history, obviously because of COVID, we have three Thursday night games. Well, it's obviously yeah. Thanksgiving, but you realize that. Yeah, that's a fact. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's normally two, but three is a lot. Um, but whatever. You got Washington Cowboys. Um, I think, I think we can bounce back, but with Alex Smith, he's been playing good. He just got his first W um, since he's come back. They got a front seven. This will either way. I, I would love to pick our Cowboys the way that we've been playing. Um, I'm going to go with my Cowboys by a close one, by three. I'll go with Washington. Who you got, Fred? Are yeah, you I going Washington? Yeah, I'm going to go with the I'm going with Washington also. Their D-line is scary. Yeah, that's just – that's to <laughs> me, that's what gets it done is that front seven. No, yeah. I agree. I agree that that, that they, D-line they, is – That's is, a game changer right there for them, so – they could win the game with just the defense, defensive line alone. So their offense is yeah. eh, they're okay. It's gonna right. be a boring game. I'm, I'm just gonna put it like that. It's gonna be a boring. Game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one, which is a much better game, 
Ravens Steelers. A lot on the line on this game. Not too much, but enough to close the gap if the Ravens win this. Who you got, Freddie? Uh, I want to go with the Ravens just to keep the Dolphins undefeated. You know, their season have them <laughs> to keep them as the only undefeated team. But um, I think the Steelers could pull it off. Ben, um, he's playing out of his damn mind right now. The defense is playing good. They're playing complete football as a team. They're ten and zero for a reason, you know. But yeah. they already, I think they already beat the the Ravens first time they played yeah. their first meeting, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, they beat them in their first meeting. Yeah. So, I think they'll give the season. I think they sweep them for the season. And so, I'm going with the Steelers in that one. Right. I mean, uh, he... yeah, I mean, especially now with a bunch of the Ravens players being on the COVID list, you don't know who will be active by Thursday. Right. Um. Yeah, the Steelers, the Steelers are bound to lose. They, to me, they just don't look like a powerhouse undefeated team. Right, exactly. You know, this is something about it. Their defense obviously is great. They should have lost to the Cowboys. Exactly. They they ha- they have a great defense. They probably got the best young core of receivers. And in two weeks, they play they play the Bills still. They still gotta play the Bills like in a couple of weeks. So mm. and like like you said, they ten and zero. I mean, I don't say like I, I'm not gonna say it's gonna be a blowout, even though like the the Ravens are missing a bunch of players because. The Ravens defense shows up. It could be a dog fight all night. Right. Absolutely. You know how those N- the AFC North games get. Yep. So, but I'm I'm gonna stick with the the Steelers just based on I don't know what Ravens team is gonna be there and who's gonna be who's gonna be playing for that Ravens team. True. Yeah, I agree. Um, for those reasons as well, you don't know who's gonna be there. Uh, Pittsburgh is one of the best defense, if not the best defense in the league. And if they're going to be without their two top running backs, then it's going to just make their job a lot easier. And, so and, and and tight end, right? Exactly. So mm-hmm. uh, I got the Steelers on that one. Chargers Bills. Chargers have been a, a sneaky good team. Their record doesn't show that, but they've been a a pretty decent team. They've lost all all their games have been lost by one or three points. Yeah. So. Team, but they're going up against a, a, a good Bills team. I'm gonna go with the Bills just because they they just have the complete team. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers give them a fight. Who you got, uh, E? I'm gonna go Buffalo. Young quarterback against a good defense, and Buffalo's yep. offense is good too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the Chargers had a good win. Points. The Chargers had a good win yesterday. But you played the Jets. I think us three and eight more people can put touchdowns up against the Jets right now. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I'm Freddie, we know ball. you want the Chargers to win this game. Exactly. But who do you have winning no, I this got game? The, um, I got the Bills um beating them. You know, the Bills right now, um, Allen is playing good. They got Diggs playing good. Their defense is playing good. But they are coming off a of bye week, so I can see them being a little bit off. But I don't see the Chargers winning this game. But you never know. Justin Herbert could come Where's out. It? And Where's the game up. being played? You said what? And Buffalo. Bu- at Buffalo. Yeah. Yeah, even better. To me, West Coast <laughs> teams, West Coast, no, West Coast teams traveling to the East usually struggle too. Yeah. Especially in the winter when it's cold out. Yeah, so LA going, going to upstate Buffalo. Hello. Mm-hmm. You know, but if they do, they come. If the Chargers come out and play, if Justin Herbert come out and light them up like he's been doing for the past couple of weeks, except against my Dolphins. But um, <laughs> they could sneak out a win. You know, they could. I could see them trying it because they've been playing close games. It's not like Buffalo's been having any blowout wins. They've been playing everybody That's true. close games. You know what I mean? I think what they, they might have true. maybe one or two blowout wins, maybe. But they struggled against the Jets. They struggled against. They would have lost to the Patriots if it wasn't for Cam Newton fumbling. So true. They lost on a a hail mary last week. So it's like, you know what I mean? They let teams get back into the game and give teams hope. So if they give the charge, the Chargers could come out hot and score and show that they could put up points and keep up with the with the Bills' offense. I think they could probably squeeze out a win, maybe. But I still, I'm still gonna take the Bills. Yeah, I agree with that. 
This one is a sneaky good game, especially how good the Colts played last this past Sunday. Colts, Titans. Now, normally I would pick the Titans off rip, but Phillip Rivers just came off of, to me, his best game of the year in a Colts uniform. He, he, he played amazing, even injured. He was limping on, on and off the field. They, their running game, they got two to three running backs that can give you great minutes, great time. Um, their defense steps up when, in, when they need to. That team looks sneaky good, but the Titans also look dangerous. Their defense isn't as good as I think. So based off of that, I'm going to go with the Colts to win this one in a close one. I think Derrick Henry still has a big game. Tannehill, he's been surprising the hell out of everybody mm-hmm. because I keep wait, fucking wait. benching him. And he what? keeps lighting it up every time I bench him. Huh? I mean, who are you talking about surprising people? There's one person here that uh, definitely knows two but sides of Ryan Tannehill. I've always been a Ryan Tannehill supporter. Even through his bat, I've always been a Ryan Tannehill supporter. That's very true. Very true. Freddie, they, no matter Freddie what. has been a very big supporter of Ryan Tannehill because obviously he was with the Miami Dolphins. But um, yeah, Tannehill has been playing amazing this these past few weeks. Yeah. Um, so this one's gonna come back, come down to the to the nail. And I'm but I'm gonna go with the Colts. Freddie, who you got? This is like a toss up game right now. I'm gonna go. It could go either way. I'm gonna take the Titans. Just just for the fact that. We, if they can't stop Derrick Henry, it's going to be a long day. And he's he's bound to crack another 200-yard game sooner or later. You know what I mean? Very true. So, and how disrespectful of them to go on the, the field, of, on the um, logo of the Ravens during that game, pre, uh, pre-game. Disrespectful. Yeah, so they got they have like some – it seems like they're getting their little bully identity back. You know, they, they've been missing – you know, they've been MIA for the past couple of weeks with a couple of losses, whatever. But it seems yep. like they're getting a little bit of their identity back now. They're getting back to that ground and pound game. Run the ball with Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Do some play actions. Get the quick little passes out. So I think if they can establish the run, they should be able to beat the Colts. But listen, the Colts is sneaky good also. Who would have thought Phillip Rivers would have been playing? Who would have thought this would have worked? Phillip Rivers coming from yeah. the Chargers where he's been at all his career now to come to play with the Colts. They started yeah. off what? and has them at what? three or something. Three like that. Or so they started off shit. like zero and one or something like that, and they've been streaking. They've been streaking quietly. They've been winning quietly. Quiet. They've been getting as much attention as they're supposed to be getting, but they have been winning quietly. They're seven and three, so a quiet seven and three. Yeah, seven and three. That's you can't sneeze at that at all. E, who you got? I say the Titans. Uh, I watched most of that uh, Colts game yesterday. And, like, their defense stepped up big time in the second half, only giving up three points. Oh, and this is a division game. I thought to cut you off. This they yeah. played for basically first yeah, place. It, they, yeah, to, to hold Rodgers mm-hmm. yep. the one half is big. But you did allow 28 points in the first half. And they could have yeah. damn well lost that game yesterday if it wasn't for homeboy fumbling. But mm-hmm. to me, like like That's Freddie true. said, the big thing with them, the big thing with that is you can't stop Derrick Henry. It's gonna be a long, tiring day for you. <laughs> and who wants to tackle him in the in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter when you tired already? Bro, he had twenty eight carries for one hundred thirty yeah. yards yesterday. And not and let's let's not forget to mention AJ Brown at receiver. <laughs> Did we see AJ Ooh. Brown carry a defender into the end zone yesterday? Yeah, mm-hmm. he demolished him, made him look like a baby. And I think the Tennessee bad. defense is yeah, he, he, so, he deserves so more fine. respect. He hasn't been getting good defense. Yeah, what was that? E? No, I made a comment about the game that's on right now. Oh. Um, next game, Panthers coming off of a very shocking win um, against who did they play last week? Lions. Um, Lions and shut them out. They're going up against the Vikings. Uh, I think the Vikings bounce back with this game. I don't think the Panthers have what it takes. That was a lucky win against a decent team. 
the Vikings will be much better. Again, just like you guys said about um, the Titans running back, the Vikings have another running back that can fucking run the ball and get you 200 yards. So I, I think they get back to that and they win the game with that. Who you got? Freddie. I'm going to take the um the, the Vikings on this one also. Um, they have too much firepower for the Panthers on defense. You know what I mean? Like um, their offense, the mm-hmm. Vikings offense is too – like I would say it's – it's not predictable because they could they have you have a running back that could take over a game and you also have Thielen, but Thielen might not be there because yeah. he got he got COVID, right? Or something's on the COVID list. I think so, yeah. So if he doesn't play, you're gonna get a heavy yeah, dose. Yeah, I think so. He just got on it. So they, if he's not gonna play, you're gonna yes. get a heavy dose. <laughs> yes. And that's gonna spell trouble. And you still got Je- Jefferson out there. Who's been cool. I was gonna I mention. Forgot all, I forgot all about Jefferson. You even got the rookie out there, Je- Jefferson out there, the rookie. So mm-hmm. it's, we'll see. He's gonna get more touches tomorrow. I mean, on Sunday. So he's gonna get more looks. You know, he's gonna get more opportunities, especially if Cook can start running, getting good yardage, and that play action starts running. He's yeah. Gonna be good. I agree. I got the Vikings just because Alvin Cook is. Probably for this season, the best running back in football. And like you yeah. said, even without no Thielen, and, and now is Carolina's most likely playing without Christian McCaffrey and without Teddy Bridgewater still. Yeah. You know, they got that, right, they got exactly that XFL, so. who they got they starting got from? XFL quarterback. The XFL dude, right? You know? Yeah. So yeah, I, he, I he he lit it up though. He definitely lit he it up. Did. He put up twenty points. Yeah, yeah. Cool, you gotta give credit when credit's due. Um, a shockingly good Browns team. I don't even want to call them good. They've been they've been going against bad teams and doing what they're supposed to do, which is run the fucking ball. Don't believe in Baker. Baker is yes. only there for show. He looks nice and all that shit, but your game is run the ball. When you run the ball, you win games, and they are sitting at seven and three because of it. So I'm going with the Browns against a bad Jaguars team. Run the ball. E, who you got? Cleveland, don't run the ball. Throw it to Juice. I need the fantasy points. My man Juice. (laughs) That's all I ask. Obviously, I'm (laughs) – if it wasn't for the Jets, the Jaguars would be the worst team in football. Yeah. Yeah. Need to say Cleveland. Yeah, I got the I got Cleveland. It's I'll be surprised if the Jaguars do win, but I do got Cleveland though. Giants, Bengals. Well, clearly without Joe Burrow, I would go with Joe Burrow with this so fast, but without him. I'm going to go with the Giants because the Giants have sneakably, besides the past few weeks with the Cowboys, the Giants have looked like the best team in the NFC East. And they've been playing good football. They just haven't been able to pull them out. They could have beat the, the I, w- I almost called them the Patriots, but the Bucs. Um, <laughs> they, 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 they had some close games. <laughs> yeah, they had some close games this year, so I'm gonna go with the Giants. But if Joe Burrow was still there, I would definitely go with the Bengals in that game. Hands down, Freddie, who you got? I'm going with the Giants too because I don't even know who's Joe, I don't even know who's the Bengals quarterback. <laughs> I don't even know who's <laughs> who's there, and who's he gonna like? He's not gonna have time to throw the ball. One, Joe Burrow's been getting all the reps in practice training camp since he's gotten there. So one, yep. this is gonna be whoever the quarterback is, is gonna be his first full week. With the starters. Yeah. That's going to be rough for him. <laughs> Let's see. Who the fuck is there back up? Does it matter? E, I'm assuming you're going with. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with the Giants. I'm okay. Not All right. Here goes another. Uh, could be a good one, depending on what team we get on this one. Cardinals, Patriots. Now, if the Patriots play like they've been playing as of late, Cam finally having a 300-plus yard passing game, he looked good yesterday. He looked like the old Cam yesterday. But the team keeps making 
you know, mistakes at the end that cost them. And they're putting up three points instead of six. So with that being said, their defense is still solid, just not enough. I think because of that, I'm going with the Cardinals. I think Murray has sneakily been in the conversation for MVP, yes. probably at the bottom, though. Uh, uh, he's got Drake, who's been playing well. Another name that you know well, <laughs> uh, Freddie. Akin to Drake uh, with Drake, and then Hopkins, one of the best, if not the best, uh, receiver in the game this year. Um, yeah, I mean, Kyler Murray has been unbelievable with making plays when they're broken up. He's been one of those guys, he's been looking like not exactly like uh, Lamar Jackson, but somewhat of a, a, a little lesser version of him. Uh, he make his, his his speed is ridiculous, yes. and he can make a lot of guys come after him and then make a play down the field on a broken play. So for that reason, I'm going with uh, with the Cardinals. But I, again, I would not be surprised if the Patriots pull this out because you, I never bet, I never like betting against Bill Belichick. So I'll go, I'll leave it at that. E, who you got with that one? I think Arizona gets back on track after the loss to Seattle. Um, you said Kyler Murray's probably at the bottom of the MVP race. Right now, I don't think there's a bottom. That MVP race is open. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, it's an nah. open race. No, no, no. I wouldn't say it's open either. It's a, listen, yeah, everybody had their little that. chance. Everybody's had their runs where they look like the clear, the clear favorite. And then they go through a little rough patch. So I think it's still open. I'm not saying it's Kyler's to go and take. But you never know if he gets on a run, he he's definitely up there for consideration. But yeah, I think they get definitely. back to track yeah. again from after that loss in, in Seattle. Right. I'm gonna take the oh, go ahead, Freddie. I'm gonna take the Cardinals also. Just I don't like the Patriots, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take the Cardinals. Though. I think the Cardinals is um, a way better team than them. The only thing I can save the Patriots is really their defense. But their defense as of late been yeah. looking a little, little shaky. You know what I mean? But Cam seems like he's getting back. If, and if Cam gets back to his form, then that's scary. And like I had said yeah, before, very true. they still in the thick of it when it comes to the playoffs and for the division. Think about it. They're only two games behind. they four and five. Yeah. This is nuts. Speaking of that division, we're going to get into that division. Speaking of your team, they're going to need to bounce back oh, against a horrible Jets team. <laughs> why, why, why are we predicting this game? You know why? why are we giving up? Because it's any given Sunday game? and anything can happen. And right. I would not be completely surprised if it happened. Not because I think it will happen. I just would not be surprised if it right. did. But right. I'm obviously that's going to right. That's just that him wishing some bad juju on you or some shit. No, it's oh, not. It's just the vision games are different, man. The yeah. vision games are so different. It doesn't matter if you're the worst team in the NFL. When you play the division game, it's like you're both the best. I just think I just think the Jets are legit. They are legit trying to lose. They're tanking for sure. Joe but Flacco it, has lost it. But Joe I think Joe Flacco completed even, three passes in the first half yesterday. I think Sam Darnold is going to be back this week. That's what he they're saying. To. They're saying Sam Darnold should be back against Miami this week. Unless they're they're trying to save – well, unless they're trying to save him for a trade when the, in the offseason, I wouldn't even put Sam Darnold in there. <laughs> Leave Joe Flacco's whack ass out there. Keep losing games. Get that first draft pick. Look at Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Raiders, Falcons. Raiders. Falcons suck. Yeah, Raiders hands down. Like I got the Raiders. Raiders is definitely playing better. They're playing good ball. Surprising, they're playing good ball. Cali, yes, I'm giving y'all some respect for once. Yeah, actually playing good Cali. ball. We'll see y'all in a couple of weeks though. But <laughs> they are playing good ball. Surprisingly, you know, um, their defense is actually playing good. They should have won yesterday. They should have beat the Chiefs yesterday. But yeah, that was a close one. That was a good. They, they, I feel like that's the one team that just has the Chiefs number. Yeah. No matter what, they always play them good. They always yeah. play them good. Um, 
Saints Broncos. Do you think you can do it again, E? Can you do it again? Where where are we playing? We playing in New Orleans? It's at home. It's in the Mile High. Taysom Hill starting, right? Yes, he is. I'm going to give us a shot. No funny shit. I'm definitely going to give us a shot. Just because (laughs) it's (laughs) the I'm not saying I'm gonna give us a shot. If Drew, obviously, if Drew, what happens when you let somebody win? No, 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 no. This is what happens. This is what happens right here. Hey, I'm giving us the chance just because it's Taysom Hill starring, and not Drew Brees. If it was Drew Brees, I'd be like, why you, why you asking me the stupid question? Listen, I guarantee the Falcons said the same thing yesterday, and this dude went out there and tore the <laughs> up yesterday. Bro. Yeah, but and but, but yeah, look at a lot of Falcons, look, though, look so. at their scores though. Yeah, but look I how mean, they scored. They yeah. didn't they didn't throw the ball well. Yeah. He, he he scored running. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but he he did look good at quarterback. He didn't. He I don't know no, if he, he scored a. Bad, uh, but I'm just saying, like, but he looked good. I think I think I'm gonna take yeah, the same, but I won't be surprised if y'all squeeze out another win. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that we could go out there and clearly win, but this could be a game that we sneak out just because. Yeah, yeah. You know? Right. I, I agree. I, I, I'm going to go with the Saints as well. Their defense has been playing amazing the past few weeks, which they need because, you know, without your starting quarterback, even with Drew Brees out there, because Drew Brees hasn't been looking amazing either, Mm-mm. but that defense has been able to hold them down and shit like that. But I think what's important for the Broncos is that run game. That run game was huge for you guys yesterday. Huge. If you guys are able to run the ball like that and take yeah. a little pressure over a lot, who is still battling injuries, that makes it a little easier. The defense stepped up. If they can step up, they can make it a hard game for them. They can make it a real hard game for them. And like you said, I could I could see them possibly pulling out a close one. But I'm going to stick with the Saints. Uh, 49ers, Rams, Rams. Yeah, Rams. 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 Bears, Packers. Yeah. Low key good game here. Low key good game here. Who started? Sunday night game as well. Huh? Is that is is Trubisky back under as starting quarterback? I hope not because he looked garbage. Uh, let's find out. Because didn't Foles get hurt? I, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put him in. Didn't Foles get hurt last game though? Uh, oh, you're right. Absolutely, I forgot about that. Yep. He did. Um, yeah, he did. He, you're he, right. You said it's a sneaky game, but I ain't going against Rogers. Against he owns the Bears. Yeah. If it wasn't for Aaron Rodgers, I think with, with Foles in, it would give it a better aspect. Yeah. I'm going with the Packers. Yeah, I. Without Foles, I don't, I just don't trust Trubisky yeah, at all. I'm, I'm, Trubisky um, but I think the Bears game. defense could make some noise. Of course. Yeah, they could. <laughs> they could, but they need to score points. And Trubisky, it's not happening with him. Yeah. Aaron absolutely. Rodgers, you have to score points against, against yeah. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, that's true. And then the Monday night game Seahawks, Eagles, Seahawks. Mm-hmm. Nah, I got the Eagles. I mean, yeah, Seahawks. I'm, about... I'm playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> you got the Eagles? I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if someone picked the Eagles only because the Seahawks' defense is horrible. Yeah, I mean, so is horrible. That's a fact. Very true. It's really going to depend on whose defense. I mean, the Seahawks are going to win regardless, but I want to see who's going to be better, the Seahawks' defense or Carson Wentz. That's the question. Seahawks defense. <laughs> I mean, yeah, when you got the guy, who, <laughs> when you got the guy who needs the league and pick. Nico, we gonna have to get your ass on here because you gonna have to explain this shit, Nico. You got to come on here next and explain your whack ass Philadelphia Eagles. Wow, just the shots. Yes, because they've been taking shots at me all day. All week, all year. So I'm taking shots right back, motherfucker. As you Callie, we're going to get you on here too. Talk about your Raiders. Because they're doing well. So we, we support you. We support you. Other than that. Because Callie was a Bengals fan. 
I bring this him up. I bring this up to him all the time. He used to always tell me he was a Bengals fan. Then all of a sudden, he's a Raiders fan now. Uh, Cali, you get an ask. Cali, you're gonna have to explain yourself. <laughs> you're gonna have to come up here and explain yourself, Cali, because we got people questioning your loyalty to your team. We can't have that. We gotta get to the bottom of that, and we can only do it here on Jones of the Sports. You did. Well, other than that, appreciate y'all, Freddie. E, thank y'all for coming on. As always, I'm your host, Sean Jones. Jones of the Sports, Locker Room Sunday. We make sports better. Peace.